What's up guys and welcome to SoberTube. Today we will be doing our first interview. We will be traveling from Long Island to New Jersey to meet up with an old friend of mine named Emily. Emily has a really crazy story. She comes from a dark place and she has come such a far way. And what's really amazing is sometime recovery is a long-term goal because Emily went from being in a bad spot to getting a lot better to where she is now, which is just amazing. And I'm so impressed with her recovery. I can't wait to show you guys. So we're off to New Jersey and I will see you when I get there with Emily. Thank you. What's up guys and welcome to SoberTube. We just got here to New Jersey and we're here to interview Emily Fitness, an old friend of mine who I haven't seen in years, so it's really cool to come here and see her today. First of all, Emily, how old are you? Where are you from? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm 25 years old. I am from Woodbury, Long Island. I went to Plattsburgh for a couple years and now I'm actually a celebrity trainer at this gym called The Dog Pound. So Emily, <laughs> tell the world if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. What was your worst day like, or what were the worst times like for you? The first time, uh, I was sitting in a jail cell because I got really, really high on Xanax, and I don't even remember doing this, but I decided to go into a Century 21 and steal a wallet out of a woman's bag. She didn't catch me doing it. Um, I got caught on security cameras like a couple, like a week or two later, and then I had police knocking at my door and um, I was put in a jail cell, and I was arrested, but I got, you know, bailed out. I was put into a drug program, and then after that, um, I came back out. I fucked up again, and went back, and I sat in front of the judge, and I cried and cried, and I begged her, I'm like, please, like, I don't, I, I don't belong there, like, I don't, like, I'm not one of these people, like, I am different, like, please just give me another chance, like, you know, I, I, I can do this. She said no, and she put me back in jail, and I remember when the security guard put me in the back in the jail cell and closed the door behind me, and I was crying hysterically, and I looked around the room, and I was like, what can I use to kill myself with right now? And that's when I knew that I hit rock bottom, and that's when I knew that like I really needed to change. And while I was on probation, I was actually still doing drugs. And I woke up one day in some guy's room that I didn't really know, and um, I had apparently pierced my own nipple. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like I I don't remember doing that. I remember him waking me up and being like, "Yeah, you have to go." Like whatever. And I remember still being like really not okay. I was still really high. I'm like, I can't drive right now. Um, and I got in the car and I started driving home and every probably like 50 feet I would drive into like the guardrail. And I got home and I was like, you know, if I got, if I make it home today, like I promise you, like I'm never going to do this shit again. Um, and I got in my drive and I kind of knew, I was like, all right, like I really need to get my shit together and turn around. So I think those were my two rock bottoms. Where <laughs> so now that we know that you are a gangster, a crazy maniac, the most important thing is how did you get better? What, what did you do to recover? Honestly, they sent me to a rehab uh, to get me help and that's where I went to South Oaks. I did not choose to go there. I was actually court mandated to go there. I don't think you knew that, but it was. <laughs> and um, there was this one counselor there, there named uh, Carissa. I'll never forget her because she honestly kind of saved my life. I'll never forget her. And I just remember like starting to going to the gym and that's really like where I kind of like s switched addictions. Um, I went from being a hardcore drug addict to like a gym addict where I would go there for three hours a day and like work out and like feel amazing and get the same, almost the same kind of high that I did when I was on drugs, so. What's life like today? You're into fitness, you're training celebrities. Tell me about sober life and recovery. Unreal, like literally unreal. Like what's keeping me sober is like just being, waking up every day and like pinching myself and being like, is this real life that I'm living right now? I have my own apartment. Um, I have a boyfriend that's not abusive and like not horrible and mean and he's a really good guy. I got a beautiful dog. I live in a great apartment, like I said. 
and my job, um, my job's really freaking cool. Like being able to say that I train like some of the most successful people in the world and knowing that I came from being in a jail cell and like wanting to kill myself. Um, coming that far kind of is like I never ever want to be that person again. Like I'm, I gotta stay on this right path and like just keep kicking ass every day. And um, I really want to help other people, you know, learn to like love themselves, recover from either eating disorders or just like wanting to get out of the depression or just wanting to take any back pain they have away. Like it's, it's just a blessing that I'm able to like, be here and do all those things. Meanwhile, if you look back, like just a couple years, less than 10 years ago, I was literally in a jail cell. So good things can happen. I promise you. Good things can happen. <laughs> it's really cool. Have hope. Emily literally came from a jail cell to training celebrities. And I know that when you were in the jail cell, just like when I was in my last rehab, it's like, this is going to be impossible to get better. Yeah. And how cool is it that people like us can recover? Yeah. Now, if there was someone that was in your place, down and out, maybe in a jail cell or a rehab or suffering right now from this addiction, is there anything that you can say to them to give them a little bit of hope? Just keep pushing through and dream big. Like, give yourself one goal, one big goal to focus on, and don't stop until you get there. Like, just be fucking persistent. As bad as you want those drugs, like, as you wanted those drugs, like, want that job or want that, like, dream car or dream apartment even more. If you just keep working at your dreams, I promise you you're capable of anything. Like, if I can do it, I believe, honestly, that anyone can. Anyone can. Wow, guys, that was a crazy experience. I haven't seen Emily in a few years, like I said before, and just to see how far she's come and how much her recovery has changed since I met her is really, really cool. And to see how much gratitude she has about her recovery. It really is wild to see just someone accomplish what they think is the impossible. I can't imagine what it would be like to just be sitting in that jail cell like Emily was and be like, am I ever gonna get to live a regular life or something close to it? I remember in the end for me, I had lost my apartment, my car, I was unemployable. And I remember after my first year clean, I'm like, yes, I got a year, this is as good as it gets. And now with multiple years, I'll tell you that it never stops getting better. I thought best case scenario for me is I could live a really long life shooting heroin and taking Xanax and drinking alcohol, doing cocaine and doing drugs every single day. And if I was lucky, the best day ever could just be I was able to put enough money together to get all the different drugs that I have. And hopefully I won't get sick. You know, for people like me and for people like Emily, there's so much more to life. How did Emily get from a jail cell to training celebrities. Literally, she has made her dreams come true in recovery. You know, if you're a family member of someone that's suffering from this disease, or if you yourself is suffering from this disease, just know that if Emily can get better, you can get better. If I can get better, you can get better. I hope that we have given you a little bit of hope today and provided some evidence that recovery is possible for everybody. I know what it's like to be an addict and feel like you're the most unique guy in your family because no one knows what you're going through. But let me tell you, I witness while helping people get better, there are millions of people just like you. And people like us do get better. How hard are you willing to work to get your life back? Because I know how much effort it takes every single day to borrow, cheat, steal, and scam. Imagine putting all of that effort into something good into sobriety, into recovery. Imagine how much you could change your life. My name is Brian. Thanks for watching today's YouTube series, SoberTube. Share this video, subscribe, like, do something, just get involved in something good. If I can get better, you can get better. Thanks for watching.